due to Maria. That's better. You don't actually have spots on your face. <laughs> Excellent. Right. Should we um, should we get started with the next next little section on um, on the maestro? And I don't know if everybody's seen all of the other ones, but it, it, it we'll, we'll, we'll pretty much continue where we where we left off. Um, let me just show you what kind of setup we've got here. Spotlight video. There we go. Yeah, so what, what I've got at the moment is I, I thought the best thing to start is rather than getting um, a Pad 1 360 full, fully wired setup, I thought we'd just build one slowly and quickly. So I've got an Arduino uh, Mega, I've got the, um, the USB shield, um, I've got the um, USB, sorry, the Bluetooth receiver for the um, Xbox controller and the Xbox controller. So, so effectively, that that is the control system. Obviously, we're not plugging in saber tooths and all that sort of stuff. But I thought, yeah, rather than trying to build one up as we, um, you know, take one that's already built, what we can do is just play around with how these how these things go together. It just gives a bit of a clearer picture um, of how the Padawan system actually functions. If that makes sense. Cool. So. Um, so again, the first the first step in doing the, the pad one system is you have to pair the receiver and the controller. Now, what I've found is there's a number of these compatible receivers that you can get on Amazon and whatever, um, and I've had no end of problems with them. So I always try and get the Microsoft ones, the official ones, um, and these are, always seem to be reliable. And I'm a real fan of compatibles because generally I don't have much issue with them but on these things uh, you would definitely definitely try and see to get to these once you've got your receiver the first thing you've got to do is is pair it with the uh, with the pad one so you literally you pop it into a USB connection on your PC um, and what happens is you've got you've got your light and it's very similar to what you would do um, when you when you've got a new Xbox you sort of press the light so it starts flashing on the back of the controller, I think as probably most people are aware, there's a little button at the back. So you press that button at the back, and then what happens is the two lights kind of stop flashing, and you pair them together. Now um, there is, um, let me just let me spotlight video. There is actually a uh, software driver package that you can download onto your PC. So it's just it for Windows um, 7 and Windows 10 and whatever. And it's it basically lets you test the controller. So what I tend to do is pair them first of all, and then um, let me just share my screen. Uh, screen one share, if you can see that. Let's minimize that, minimize, let's minimize all of this rubbish in the background. Click on that, okay. Save that. You can see, whoops, we've got loads of stuff kicking around in the background there. Um, let me just. Everybody can see the screen, yeah? Yeah. Okay, let me just. So the software comes up with this thing here, which is the game controllers. And if it's paired, you've got, you get this controller Xbox. If you go into the properties, I don't know if you can see that right in the middle of the screen, but what it lets you do then is just test the actual controller. And I, I, to be honest, I'd, I'd, I'd go through this step by step because it, what I did when I first built mine is I connected it all together, it didn't work, and then you're kind of working out what's, what's happening. But if you do it stage by stage, you can kind of, uh, you can make sure that everything's working. So at this stage, I'm, as I'm pressing buttons now, it's showing you which buttons I'm actually pressing, um, and therefore I know that the two are paired together if that makes sense. Um, and again, just, just Google the uh, Xbox 360 driver and uh, you'll come across that software from Microsoft. Once those two are paired, they are they're paired until you choose to unpair them, until you kind of reset them. And so let me just put that to uh, spotlight video. There you go. So, the next thing is is these little USB boards, um, and these are the USB shields, and they literally fit on top of the the the, um, the Arduino Mega. 
And again, I have had some issues with these not working so well. So I, I do try to get hold of the Keys ones. I've had no problem at all with the ones that are, are branded as Keys. And again, you can kind of see, you can get these on eBay or, or Amazon or wherever you, uh, you buy electronics for. But they're the yes. compatible ones, again, I don't, I've, had, I've had a few issues with the way that they, um, they work. That's K E Y E S. K E Y E S. That's right. Okay. Thank you. I wasn't able to quite make it out. Yeah, it was a little, little bit out of focus, I think. But, um, Sorry. Yeah. So, so these just um, pop on like any other shield. Bit fiddly, but I'm trying to get all the pins in. Just try and get that one to there. Doesn't it go at the other end of it, though? Does it? Well, sorry. Doesn't, doesn't that, that uh, shield want to go at the other end of it, by the, 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 the power end rather than the... Um... It does, yeah. I think, where am I? Yeah, sorry. Um, I'm trying to be on video at the same time. There we go. Yeah, the, the way to test, the way to check where you put it on is... It's great these are to focus cameras, but they don't always focus on the right bit, do they? But you can see the... Um, there's a little tab on the bottom of that, which is that one, and then there's a matching tab on the a matching six set of six pins in the middle of the the mega. So that's that's how I tend to remember those two have to match up, and then once those two match up, it goes like that. So it does fit, as you said, on the power end. Yeah, and then your next thing is to plug in um, your, your paired receiver. And at that, that stage, then you, that that's pretty much the main um, receiver and controller system for the for the pad ones. So if I grab um, I've got a USB cable. And what we'll do is we'll just fire up that uh, the Arduino. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to upload the late the. So there we are. I've just I've just connected that and powered that on. Um, so let me, again, let me share my screen and I'll just go on to the Xbox receiver. There we go. Right. So when you, um, when you build these, it's it, it, the first thing that you will download when you download this from Dan's site is the libraries that come with it and the library that comes with the usb host shield you've got the usb host shield library um what you could what that comes with some examples and all i've really done is i've just opened one of those examples so i've opened the go into the arduino um, ide go into examples scroll down library and under that usb host shield library you've got an xbox and an xbox receiver so I'm not using the, um, the Padawan 360 sketch. I'm actually using just the default example that came with it, just to show you how it, how it kind of works. So this is the default sketch that you can see on the screen. Um, and then I'm just going to make sure I've got my Arduino Mega selected. I've got COM14 selected. Um, and then uh, sketch, I'm going to hit click on upload. And in theory, what it should do is compile a sketch and then pop the sketch onto that receiver. So it's going to upload in at the moment, and now it's clicked on done uploading. Um, what the default sketch does, and I'll, I'm not gonna go through all the code, but basically it starts a serial port at, at 115200. So normally when, well, what tends to happen on a lot of sketches is they'll start them at 9600 as a board rate. This one does it at 115. 5200 so when you go into the serial monitor it, that, that's where you can see what what's actually happening make sure that you've got your 115200 selected there so whatever's in under the serial start it has to match and as i said if you've got these set up to default at 9600 you'll just see a load of garbled rubbish so what that's telling me now is basically it's it's gone through it's found the controller it's it's working so i'm just i've just powered the the uh, the actual controller up um, and now what happens is as I press the buttons it actually prints what buttons I'm pressing to the serial 
So at this stage, this is the next stage of diagnostics. What I know now is I know from a hardware perspective, this is bound with the um, Bluetooth receiver. I know the Bluetooth receiver is working with the USB host, uh, the shield, and I know that the shield is working with the Arduino and the code receiving. So, you know, and, and it's, honestly, I, I'd, I'd step through it step by step rather than plugging it all together and thinking, oh my God, it's not working. Why is it not working? This way makes it a little bit easier. Um, and the, and the, the, the default sketch is really nice. You know, if you move your little uh, hat controllers, it tells you the X and Y position. It only displays the buttons that you press in. If you press the A, X, Y, A, B, it'll put, come, it'll put those up. If you press the rear trigger, which is, um, again, a variable one, it'll go higher and lower. And it actually also turns the rumble on the uh, controller when you do that so that you can feel the vibrations. So you've literally got all of, all of the controls. The other thing is it familiarizes you with what button key is called what in the actual software because they use the same labels in the chopper uh, sorry in the chopper in the pad 360 i've got chopper on the brain uh in the pad 360 sketch um as, as he's doing here so l1 is l1 etc etc that makes sense yes cool it does. so <clears throat> and this is, this is what i said is just it, it, the actual pad one system is very very simple but when you put it all together, there's a lot of moving components. So if you just build it up slowly by slowly and familiarize yourself with it, when it comes to fault finding, it'll become a lot easier because you actually understand what each component does. And you can back off and say, hang on a minute, I'll just make sure that the two are paired or, or whatever. Let me just, um, just want to check the Zoom session to make sure I'm not waiting participants. Uh, no, we're okay. Cool. So, so that at this stage, what I've got now is I've got I've got the very basics of the of the Pad One Three Hundred and Sixty. So what I'm going to do now is just put that put that to one side, because what we're going to do next is we're going to take the Maestro with a couple of basic sketches on it and see if we can get them triggered from that sketch. Because fundamentally, if you can if you can get to that stage where um, where you've got the sketch running and you can you can actually trigger uh, motions. That pretty much is a mechanism, to be honest, for running animations from from R two. Okay. Any any questions, observations, or thoughts so far? Are we okay to crack on? Uh, Michael, so you uh, you paired the Xbox with the with the receiver uh, using the PC before everything. Yeah. Is that correct? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I just. Plugged it into the PC, hit the two buttons, let it pair. The reason I use the PC is it takes all of the USB shield and the um, and the Arduino out of the equation, uh, and you can get some basic driver software and go, hey, it's working. Right. And if you want right. to, you can use your Xbox 360 for playing games on your PC. But that's a yeah. bit of a bit of a side side bend. Now that what you did there was a lot easier than what I went through with the uh, with the pad one, having it plugged in and and going through the, that. So that made it a lot easier. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it is. And, well, the other thing is, you, you, I mean, it's not that easy when you first do it. You know, I, I when, when I was setting this up this morning, I'd, I'd got another, um, I'd got another USB shield, which wasn't a keys one, and it was faulty. So again, but what I quickly found out, it was a USB shield that was faulty because I already repaired it, doing it step by step. Whereas when you plug it all together, and it's not working. You just go, ah, oh, you know, it could be one of a million. Okay. So that's the so what what we've got now is we've got we've got a working a working very 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 basic pad one system. Um, what I'm going to do now is we will shift over to the Maestro. So let me just move the camera a little bit so we can see a bit closer. Um, so what I've got here uh, is I've just got I've just got Maestro. I've got two servos that are connected to channel zero and channel one. I've also made up a bit of a cable. Um, let me just show. Uh, there's um, mm -mm -mm, share screen. Share. So this is basically 
the connections between the um, the maestro and the mega. Can everybody see that clearly? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. So all we've really got is um, this is the this is I've just put this as a test rig. I'll I'll put a share in the um, in the group afterwards with some of the these files and whatever. But we've gone through all of this bottom piece here, which is how the, the Mega's connected to the Shield, how the Shield is connected to the, con to the receiver, and how the Xbox controller. So all that bit's done. So to connect, the, um, to connect the Maestro to the Arduino, we've got, we've got four cables. Okay, We've got a ground cable, which is a black cable, and that literally goes from ground on the Mega um, to ground on the Maestro, any of the grounds. That's really important. You, what, what, the way that serial works is you've got two serial signals, but they need to have ground to be able to understand um, where those signals are. The, 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 cap, the common ground, without common ground, you just, you just won't work. You can have power on both of them, but if the grounds aren't connected, um, communication just won't happen. So I've got, I've got common ground. I've got a five volts. I'm taking five volts out of the Arduino and I'm bringing it to the voltage in on the, um, on the Maestro. And that powers the logic. So on the Maestro, there's two, there's two sets of power. And you can combine these if you want to. Uh, um, and I'll show, we, we'll talk about how we do that with a little bit of a jumper. But without the jumper on, you've got a power that powers the logic. So all of the chips and all of the brains that sit behind it. And then you've got a servo power, which is specifically for the servos. And the reason for that is you could, you could be running some really high-end servos on 12 volts or 24 volts, yet your logic's still got to be run at 5 volts. So the two are independent power. If you haven't got them both powered up, things won't work. It's very important that you've got the two. And what I tend to do is power the Maestro off the 5 volts from the Arduino because um, what I know then is that I've got a common ground, it's five volts across, and, and I'm, I'm confident then that the two are working together. And then the two wires I've got is transmit and receive, really, which is your serial connections. And what you, what you would connect is you connect your receive on your Maestro to your transmit on your Arduino, and your transmit on your Arduino to your receive on your Maestro. So they, 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 they cross over. On this diagram, it says that I'm using pins 11 and pins 12. And the reason I'm doing that is I'm using something called software serial. So on the Arduino Mega, I've got three serial ports, um, which I think I mentioned last time. There's serial one, two, and three. But you can also run a software serial, which will allow you to run serial ports on, on a number of other pins. So for this example, I'm just using software serial. The two... Um, the, the two connections, the receive and transmit, you can, have, you can make it run on one connection. So you can connect the pin 11 on the mega to the receive on the maestro. What the, the maestro literally just sits there and it's a bit like a, a one-way communication. So the, the Arduino transmits commands, um, the maestro receives them and it'll do whatever it needs to do. If you don't connect the other end, it can't talk back, so it can't give you any feedback, but it will still behave, it'll still behave and do the commands. I tend to connect the two because then I can, you can start to use some of the more advanced features where you start to get feedback from there. So four wires, pretty simple. And then the only other connection I've got is a five volt battery power, which I'm using specifically for the servo. If you want to, if you've got a strong enough five volt supply that will run up the Arduino and your servos, there's that little jumper, which is that tiny little orange square that you can see just on the, um, on the Maestro. Um, and if you move that across one, what it does is it'll take this power in um, through this five volt line and apply it to all of the servo ones. So you can run it off a single, single power supply. So you've got some options that kind of sit in there. Does that make sense? Yeah. He's saying that uh, if you do that jumper, it'll start powering the servos from the five volt from the Arduino? Yes. Or from, ooh. Yes, well, exactly. Okay. Now, if, you, <laughs> if, you've got, if you've got something like a UBEC or you've got some kind of um, reasonably solid five volt power supply going into the five volt on the Arduino, um, you've got a reasonable amount of amperage that's going in. 
on the Arduino itself, the five volt, the five volt supplies on all the pins are all connected together. So you theoretically can run it straight off that five volt. What I would tend to do is I'd tend to inject five volts and ground in the middle of these two wires if I'm using a reasonably solid power supply, and then it'll split five volts to the Arduino and five volts to the uh, um, to the Maestro. But yeah, I've got to be a little bit careful with um, the what you can run on the Arduino. Just to kind of expand on that, you could run a nine volt or a uh, 12 volt into the Arduino, which it, what, it's got its own little regulator. If you did that and then started to power the servos off the five volt, you just overload the regulator on the um, on the Arduino. So best practice is always really to power the servos separately from the logic. Um, but if you've got a chunky enough power supply going in, you can run them. Run, you can just inject the power in the middle and make sure you've got the five volts and the and the ground to two. What you've got to be careful is make sure that you're not running your servos on five, on six volts or seven volts, otherwise you'll fry your Arduino if you put it in the five volt line. So for the um, for the Maestro, is it uh, limited to five volts, just like most of the uh, Mega, or will it take more than five volts? No, the, the Maestro will take five to 16 volts to power the board. So if you if you wanted to power the board independently, you could run 12 volts straight into it, into the voltage in. Oh. It's got a fairly chunky regulator. That's to power the logic. So I don't, again, I don't know if you can see on the diagram, but it's uh, quite small, but it's got bin 5 to 16 volts, which powers the logic and ground. Um, I, I'm not sure if it applies as much to, um, to Astromex, but I know with the combat robots, we've run the um, red wire off the servo direct to the, the battery to get more voltage for a higher power servo. Yeah. Um, you guys do the same thing or? Uh, it, it depends on the servos. Most of, most of the servos I use on the printed ones, five volts is more, more than adequate. And you can get, you know, the 15, 20 K, K C low servos that just, because really they're just music, moving cosmetic or animations and they're only moving right. plastic. On the guys that are doing the aluminium droid builds and stuff like that, then yeah, that's where we start to chunk up the voltage, chunk up the, the servos and get to some, you know, the more heavy servos. Well, you've, you've got all of those options really. It's, it's how you want to sort of configure it. Um, but for the majority of kind of the cosmetic and animation stuff, then, then five volts works okay. Cool. Thanks. No, it's. I mean, it's interesting to, to, to kind of talk to what how other people do stuff and other other applications. But you've, there's lots of options on the on the actual uh, Maestro. You you can cut the channels and you can run these two six channels on different voltages as well. So there's there's lots of things that you can do. And and what people you know, I, I know what people tend to do is they'll run power straight into the. Um, straight into the servos, make sure they've got a common ground and then just run the signal from the servo controller for, for that. I think I think best practice is if you're pushing anything that's under load, it should have a separate power supply from your logic, otherwise you, you, you are at risk of brownouts. And again, for those that aren't familiar, brownouts is where, you know, a, a heavy servo or a motor will pull down the logic data. And what will happen is the um, the logic power will, will literally power itself off and on. So when you, you, and you get really weird behavior on there because what you're doing is rebooting your microcontroller every time you try and move something that's a bit chunky. Hence why you're probably better running the two on separate power supplies. Okay, great. So um, the next thing to do then is we're gonna grab the Maestro and we'll, we'll pop in a USB cable um, so the Maestro, so all I'm going to do is I'm just connecting the USB to the PC. This is similar to what we did last time really just to get a sketch um, uh, to get a little program running on the, on the Maestro. And what I'll also do is I'll also put, it, put in uh, battery power to the, um, to the Maestro, making sure that I get the wires that are white way around. I'm not going to use Rick as an example because that'd be rude, but it's not good if you get <laughs> Michael, I have, I have one question for you. 
Yep. Is it, is it recommended to run the Meister off the five volt rail or off the 12 volt rail if you can? De completely dependent on your servos. Because you, you mean for the servo side or for the logic side? Uh, well, e into the to, to the the VIN pin of the Maestro. Yeah, so the VIN pin in the Maestro is is really stable at five volts, and you can run it from five volts up to twelve volts. Mm -hmm. I find it more convenient to run it at five volts because I have to keep all my logic at five volts, just because I, if I put five volts log if I put twelve volt logic into the Maestro and it can handle it, and for whatever reason I end up plugging the Maestro, uh, the Arduino in, it'll fry it. So I try to keep all of my logic at five volts. Um, on the servo side, it's completely dependent on the servos that you're using. So a lot of servos get a bit wobbly past about six volts. And then there's some very, you know, more specialist servos that can handle higher. Okay. All right. Thank you. But it, it's, I mean, as with all these kind of questions, there's always, um, uh, you know, this is probably the best way of doing it, but there's, you know, there's lots of different options really. Okay, so I've got I've got power supply connected to power the servos, and I've got the USB connection into the Maestro, um, which means that we then should have kind of logic. So if I jump back to sharing the screen, um, and what I'm going to do now is just fire up the Maestro control center. We did have a look at this last time, so. What I've got here is I've got the serial number of the particular maestro that I'm connected to. And if I enable those two servos, I don't know if you can see the video. I know it's quite smallish. Um, there we go. So now, now what I've got in the maestro, in the, in the maestro control center is I'm moving those two servos on those two channels. Okay. So, um, let me just delete the script, start from scratch, apply settings, um, and I'll just delete these two. Uh, okay. So, on the, um, on the Maestro, we covered this last time, but what you do is you work in frames. And as you as you move the move these around, it moves the control that moves the, the, the servos around. So I'll move them both left to right. I'm going to put that say frame zero. Move them both to the right. Click on frame one. And what I've done now is I've created a sequence. And if I play that sequence, both servos, as you can see, just move left and right. Play it in loop. They'll continue to play. And as I said, we we did we, we looked at this last time. I'm just going to change the duration just so they've got the time to they've got the time to actually get back and forth because these are a little bit slower these servos that we're using. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new sequence and the new sequence is I'll, I'll do the opposite, which is move them to either end as frame one and frame two. And again, if I go on to sequence, um, I'll alter the timings to 800 again. And this time to 800. Okay. And then if I play that in the loop, so now I can see the, the servos are moving together. So I said we, we covered we covered a lot of this when we looked at the Maestro and, and we've got this on the Maestro video in a lot more depth. But what we've done is we've now created a sequence that sits inside this computer, but it's not actually in the in the Maestro at the moment. So the way we, we push it into the Maestro is once we've set all of our sequences up and I've just got two servos moving, but obviously the aim is that you'll have animations going similar to the ones that you've probably seen on the, the chopper videos where doors open, arms comes out, you've got all the timings and you can alter the acceleration. So set those up exactly as you want to do, make sure that sequences work, set all your sequences up. You can put, you know, sensible names in there and you've basically created a suite of animations that you can trigger then through the, uh, through the pad one. When you've completed all of those sequences, on here, you've got copy sequence to script or copy all sequences to script. Because we're gonna trigger things from the pad one, we're gonna use copy all sequences to script. At the moment, we've only got two, sequence zero and sequence one. So I'll click all sequences to script. And what that does is it creates the, the base maestro script. So there's, 
I'll step briefly through this to show you what it does. So there's two sequences, zero and se sequence one. Um, and what these do is they literally, there's the two frames that I've loaded. And then there's a bunch of um, kind of numbers in there that, that decide which, which, which of those frames go to what. At this stage, again, this script sits in here on the PC. And when I hit apply settings, what it's done now is it's loaded all of that into, into, the, um, into the Maestro. So if I click run script, um, device restart. If I click run script, you can see now it's working. And what that's doing is that's actually running off a, a Maestro because you've loaded that code into Maestro. At this stage, that code exists in there. So now I can unplug the USB cable um, and that code will stand there as, as a standalone code waiting for something to trigger sequence zero or sequence one. Does that make sense? Yeah. Cool. So you've got a little button on uh, here, which has got view compiled code. If you click on that, it'll open notepad and it'll show you the actual code that's in there. Now, once you disconnect the USB cable from your maestro, you can't really easily access this code. So what I tend to do is fire this up and then I'll cut and paste this code. So I've got a copy of it for later if I ever need it. Um, I can connect it back up to USB and reaccess it, but it just it just gives me um, it gives me the ability just to, uh, to 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 look at it and see what's actually happening. And the sequences, irrespective of what name you give them, so if you call them, you know, um, arm animation or door animation, they will still be referred to as sequence zero and sequence one. And when you go onto the Arduino uh, code, you're just calling sequence zero or sequence one. So what you've done at this stage is you've set, you've set your server animations up, you've created a sequence, you've got a number of sequences set up in here. From them, you've created a script, and from the script, you've thrown it actually onto the maestro. And at that stage, you pretty much have done the maestro part of that. So I'll just come out of that, and I will disconnect the USB on there. Cool. Any questions up at that point or thoughts, observations, or stuff I've missed? With you so far. Good stuff. I think I think the thing the thing with it is it's I don't know. I mean I tend to learn by doing, so it's more around trying to get hold of a bit of the hardware and just having a little bit of play and familiarizing yourself. And again, if you just build these things up slowly before you, you put together the full build. Um, it'll pay dividends in the future when you actually want to start to diagnose these things. Right, stop sharing on that. Um, right, so then the next thing I was going to flick through was the Arduino code that we're going to, what we're going to do is going to modify that code that was on there um, to see if we can now get it to start to call the animations that we've loaded onto um, onto that maestro. So let me pull up, there we go. Okay, so what I've got here is I've got the default script for, um, that came with an Xbox receiver. So the one that we played where we got to see uh, when we moved the, the various uh, controls, we could see that buttons were being pressed. Um, and what I've done is added the code for the Maestro into this. So what it means then is effectively we're, um, we've now got a very base controller. And I'll, I'll just step through the code and show you what, what I've actually added to it. So the, the, first, the first thing... Um, that I put in, and actually probably be worth just mentioning where we got this code from in the in the first place. Again, you don't, you never really um, program code. You tend to copy and paste and steal from other examples. But if you click on examples, once you've installed the library library for the uh, Polo Maestro, you've got um, five um, example scripts, and one of those is just called script. 
And all this is is just an example, very, very basic example of how you use scripts. So all I've really done is taken the elements that are sat in here and pasted them into the right areas um, that sit within the, within the USB script. Now, there's a couple of pointers on that. But the first thing is, again, if you're not familiar with Arduino, is it's gen they're split into three parts. There's three little sections of the program, and they are separated by something um, that always starts with void. So there's a when you open any script, you'll see a load of stuff at the beginning, and it's a bit they're a bit like little subroutines. The first part that runs um, up to void setup so this first top bit here is global and what that means is it's, it's literally the first thing that it runs when it powers up and it's basically setting the system up to scratch once it's set that up the next section that will run is setup and then once setup has run it'll it'll go into loop and what loop is loop is is the main code so that those top bits only ever run once and then what happens is this just keeps going around in a circle and they've always got the same um, uh, the same kind of setup on, on all Arduino programs. The reason it's really important is when you're cutting and pasting lumps across from this into other scripts, you've got to get the right parts. So if you're cut cutting something from a global section at the top, you want to paste it into the global section on the other scripts, otherwise you'll start to get some errors, if that makes sense. I don't want to go too depth into, into Arduino code, but it's just really important when you start to paste stuff across. So if I scroll down slowly on this script, what I can see is there's a number of commands, which is literally just this code. The ones in gray are just comments, but this, this bit of code here is where it's doing things uh, that, that are in global just before it gets into the setup uh, little routine. And all it's doing here is it's loading the library, which is a bit like a driver for the maestro, it's then choosing to sort out the serial port um, and then it's defining what type of maestro you've got. So it just does three little things at the beginning. The, really, the three important commands are load the driver, which is include polu maestro.h, start the serial port. In this case, we're using the software serial port. It's called maestro serial um, and it's using pins 10 and 11. And then we're defining this as a micro maestro, which is the um, 12 channel one. And we're going to call the device itself is maestro. So it's a bit like a device driver. And once all this runs together, what we've got is a device called maestro that, that kind of works. The next part the, in, in Michael. In, sorry, yeah, go for it. Question for you. Um, so you've got two references there. You got one, one says micro maestro, and one says mini maestro. Yeah. Um, the micro is the six channel, right? And the Sorry, maestro is the 12? You're right. You're right, Scott. Sorry, I'm, I misled you there. Yeah, the, the micro is the six channel. The mini is the 12 and above. All right. I just didn't, I, with, 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 since you're talking about it and, and you're, we're working with a 12, I just want to make sure you're copying or changing. Yeah. No, that was, that was my cock up that, Scott. Thank you. Um, it was, uh, yeah, so the, the micro is the six channel. The, I think I think the micro only applies to the six channel. I think all the rest of them are, are classed as minis. Okay, that is correct. No, I, I found out the hard way that the micro, the uh, uh, channel zero servo, is next to the battery instead of the other end. Yeah. On the That's micro, correct. you also have to hardwire and solder a jumper if you're going to combine your feed for use for the servos as well as running the microcontroller. Uh, there is no jumper on the micro. It has to be done by actually taking a piece of wire and doing it uh, through soldering it, whereas the minis uh, allow you to have the jumper and to configure things. Yeah. I mean, I'm a, I, just, I just like, I prefer to use the minis, the micros, I guess. So there's not much difference in price, really, is there? And to be no, honest, there is know, a, bit, no. a bit more. You've got more memory for, ske for um, sketches yep. and whatever. I agree. I like the minis too. So, so what I've pulled across into here is I put the include Polu Maestro. There was a there's a, there's a little bit of logic that's that's asking if you've got serial ports, but I've just gone straight for the software serial. So I've loaded the software serial library, 
and I've created a software serial port called Maestro Serial on pins 10 and 11. And then finally, I've defined it as a mini Maestro, and the actual thing is called Maestro. If you were um, on the chopper sketch, for example, I'd, I'd call that Maestro Head or Maestro Body. So you can change that. That's um, how you choose to label that particular device within the software. And you can have more than one on different serial ports. I think you can also ch chain them together, but I'm not, I didn't chain mine, I just run them on separate serial ports. Um, the next part of the um, software, which is in Boyd Setup, there's just one line, and all that's really doing is starting the serial port. So the Maestro serial port that we've defined, it's just got begin and it gives our baud rate of 9600. What's important with that is that does match your, um, the one that you've got set in your Maestro control center. Just see if I can get in without it being connected. But in serial settings, when you've got one connected, you can select the serial mode. By default, it will set UR fixed rates at 9600. So as soon as you start to communicate, it'll prompt you to set that at 9600. Um, that's got to be set the same. It's n I've not, ha I've never been, I've never had it, I've been had a problem with it in that it's never changed it beyond 9600 because it always defaults it there uh, to make it simple for you. So once you've done that effectively, you've loaded the driver and the serial port's actually running. And then the loop, this is a program. I mean, the, the loop that it gives you with the example is really simple. It's got Maestro restart script zero, so it runs script zero. It waits four seconds or 4,000 milliseconds. It stops running the script. It then, it's got another one where it does um, restart with parameters. You can have some scripts where you can pass numbers from the Arduino to the, um, to the Maestro. So that's a restart with script. On mine, I've kept it really simple, which I'm just, I'm just calling off to start those scripts up. So going back to the code, um, I've defined the mini maestro. I've started the serial port on there. The rest of this is the stuff that comes with the Xbox. Um, and then what I've done in the setup is I've just popped in a maestro restart script one. So literally just as it fires up, it'll move script one. That could be a homing position where you wanted to get all of the servos in a certain home position ready for when, you know, as your, as your droid fires up. Um, or it can be just something just to make sure that you've got some movement and that it, that it actually works. And then it fires into the, into the loop. Now, again, if you load this, which is the, um, um, the example that comes with the USB host, you can go through these and you can literally work out what it's doing. This matches almost exactly to what the, the pad one logic does. So, you know, the first of all, it checks that the Xbox is connected. And as I said, you don't type code, you just steal other people's code. So what, what all I've really done is I've gone down here and I've found some buttons that I want to use. So what I've done is it, where it says on this section here, if Xbox get button click up. Um, so in other words, if the button that's been pressed is up, what it'll do is it'll run everything between these two brackets. So it'll change the LED. It will serial print to say that I press the up button. And what I've done is added Maestro restart script zero. So I'm using the up button now to kick off script zero. And I'm using the down button to kick off script one. And it's that simple. Um, we covered it off a little bit last time with the, um, when we delved into the pad one uh, scripts a little, a little bit more details, but you, what you can do is you can you can do combinations and and uh, uh, buttons, and it will literally run the code that sits between there and there. So what it does mean is if you want the arm to come out for it to wave at you and for it to trigger a sound at that point, you can put everything in between these two brackets, so you can get all sorts of animation, sound, LED flashing, anything you want off off a single button press. So oh, Michael, you could you could essentially say with the one button press, with the right code in between there, open the door, bring the arm out, wave, bring it back in, and shut the door. That's correct. The, the bring the arm out, wave, and shut the door is all done on the maestro. Right. So 
what what you would typically have, like we like we showed on the Maestro, is you'd have the sequence. You, you'd literally do the, the 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 full animation sequence um, in that Maestro software. You load that as animation zero, and then when it comes to here, you just press the up button and you call script zero. Then script zero would would say to the Maestro, get going. What the Maestro would then do is it open the door, push the arm out, it would wave, it pull the arm back in, and it would close the door. So that's effectively what I've done, done on done on the chopper. Now the advantage of that is it's running all of that code on the Maestro and not on the Arduino. So what that means is that the the Arduino isn't under any load um, because what the Ardu the main task of the Arduino should be what direction do you want me to go in? I'll keep moving the motors. When do you want me to stop? I'll stop moving the motors because ultimately. Sure. What you don't want to do is actually I'm waving my arms at everybody and I can't, you can't control me for the next eight seconds while I do that because that's you know that's where you start to run into people. Admittedly, it's a friendly droid and it's waving at them, but it's still going to run into them. So you know you, you you're better off having the code running on the on the Maestro. Which allows you to get very elaborate too if you want. I mean, yeah, very elaborate, right? I mean, you can have. Yeah, you know, the last thing you want to do is put a, like a try to do everything in your main Arduino and. Add, accidentally add a delay. If you add a delay command in there, you end up having your droid going forward for two extra seconds or eight extra seconds. Yeah, you exactly. Don't really want him to. Exactly, and that you know, I think I think that's that's the beauty of Maestro. Is the, the Maestro is designed to do, you know, acceleration and deceleration to slow servos down. So the like the little periscope that it, that I've got on Chopper, you know, it's. You've got some lovely animations in there where it comes up slowly and comes to a halt. It turns round, it turns the lights on. You know, all of that would literally kill an Arduino because it'd have to send every single micro servo position at the right time to do it. Whereas the Maestro does that for it. All the Arduino does is go, just run that script for me. So th this is, you know, this is really the power of it. If you're trying to control the um, the speed of it through the Arduino, it, it really does, it really does start to kill it. Okay, hey Michael, so, this, is kind of, yep. this is kind of a, a silly, probably rookie question. What is the I? So you got, you know, get button, click up, comma, I. What is the I? Um, the I is a variable. Um, okay. So what what you've got, um, without getting sort of too, too technical, is you, you've got a bit of a, uh, here you've got a for, you've got a for, it's called a for loop. So what this does is it'll it'll start the eye at zero, it'll count the eye up zero, one, two, three. Once it gets over to four, it'll go back again. Okay, so that's asking which which controller it is. Yes. Okay, yeah. thank you. So so yeah, I mean it's the the eye is a variable in the actually let me just pull up the chopper one. I've got the chopper open. Just uh, file recent. Just going to try oh, that pad on chopper. Yeah, on the on the chopper one, I'm not using the I. I'm just using I think it's true or false. I can't remember which one it is, but uh, let's see. This is the uh, the standard pad one code. Find. Let's get into the bottoms. Yeah. So I don't know if you can see that, but what, what you yeah doing, getting but you you zero yeah I got it okay using zero yeah so. But all, all the the eyes eyes doing is it's just it's just because it, we're we're using that standard that standard script, right? Thank you. No problem. So um, so that that's literally all I've done. So all I've done is loaded the driver, set the device, and then uh, in here I've I've just popped where I want to run the script um, under which button, which is literally up and down, and I'm just using script zero and script ones, which are the two scripts that we we loaded when we started. So the next thing we've got to do then is connect the um, connect the Maestro to the Arduino. So I'm just going to unplug this so we don't get any magic smoke. And what I want to do is connect the red wire to five volts, which is there. The black wire to ground, which is there. And then I've got the, the other two are the two logic ones. So I've got transmit and receive. Um, so I'm grabbing this pin here, which is 
this one is the receive end. So that's eight, nine, 10, 11. And then the transmit from the maestro to the receive on the serial port into there. So I've just connected those four cables. We love doing live demos because of course everything will just work beautifully. We won't get stuck in a fault finding loop. Let's do the world, see what happens. So now I've fired the um, maestro. We've got all of the serial connected. So the next thing I've got to do is load the code. So file, uh, sketch, upload, sketch, upload. So the code's loading. Code is now uploaded. And you can see that what just happened there, I don't know if you saw the servos, but the servos moved which is a good sign because at, at this stage, there's no serial connection at all um, between, start picture. So there's, there is no, there's no USB connection on that Maestro. So that Maestro literally has got the battery power and it's being powered um, from the Arduino Mega from the USB connection. So if I grab my controller now um, and power it up. So the first thing that you're waiting to see is the lights on the, the top have, have stopped. So I know I've got connection. The easiest way to check it on the, um, on the example sketch is just to push this button at the back. Because what that actually does then is it, uh, you get the rumble. I'm getting the rumble, so that means it's connected to it there. And then in theory, if I push the up key, which is on that button, it's running script zero, and I press the down key, it's running the other scripts. And the way you can see it is they'll they they'll run opposite. So they're running both coming towards the middle, and then when you push that one, they start to run in parallel. Okay. And, and that, that's, pretty much it that's how it how it works so when you want to add these things to um when you want to add these things to you know your existing build if you go through that step by step you can you can easily inject that code into uh, into wherever you need really cool let me just there we go you can see my horrible hairy face now cool um and yeah, so uh, did that m make sense step by step? Anything? Any questions on that? So do you have a USB hub inside your droids? <laughs> so you can hook up your Sabertooth, your Maestro, your Arduino, and whatever else. You mean so that I could easily access the USB to reprogram it and whatever? Yeah. Yeah, what I tend to do is have, I just have the, um, I tend to position the board so that the USB is, is facing an easily accessible area. I mean, you know, I'm not, I'm not an obsessive cable management and port kind of guy. I, you know, it's me, uh, you kind of throw it all in. It's a bit of a rat's nest if it works, hey ho. Um, and then when it goes wrong, I have to pull everything apart and then rebuild it. I'd love to, I mean, I, I'm absolutely astounded and amazed by the guys on all in lines and then they got USB plugged in for, for each device and I'd love to do it. Um, I just don't, don't do, <laughs> if that makes sense. But, um, but no, I, I tend to, I, I do tend to aim it so that the USBs are all pointing in the right direction. And at least I can get access to the, um, uh, to the Arduino's. I've got to rethink on the maestros, I think, a little bit, because I think that they equally, once you've got a basic bunch of sketches running like I've got on the chopper, you know, you, you, you just keep coming up with, wouldn't be great if I could do this, or wouldn't be great if I could add sounds, and everything in there is now physically connected, the electronics is working, the logic's working, the only bit that you start to want to play with then is the code. So having eight eight USB plugs that you could just plug one in and, and, and keep flashing stuff would be pretty cool, I think. Yeah, I, I was kind of only halfway kidding when I said that because about halfway through I realized, well, 
the, mic, the Maestro had an, a USB port for programming and well, we already know that the Arduino does and the Sabertooths, well, the bigger Sabertooths do, so you can change the ramping if you need to, but I don't even know how many other devices could potentially be connected that way. Yeah, I'm not at any. Um, I'm not at any need to reprogram the saber to to change the ramp. Um, the fault setting is quite nice, and on the and on Dan's Padlon sketch, you can actually increase the speed, the turn, in the code as opposed to changing the um, the saber tooth. So I've never had any massive need to do that. But certainly the the, the Maestros and the Arduinos, you just want to play. You want that extra bit. You want to, you know, you just keep revisiting it with code. So I think having I do think having a USB hub or some kind of section where you can plug into each one and they're all nicely labeled would be pretty wonderful, to be honest. Uh, taking a step back, the um, you showed the keys board um, that you you set up on your um, Arduino. Yep. And then you're running the Maestro to control the servos. The keys board is that a keys variant of the Maestro, or is that a, a different board? That's um, uh, that's a. Uh, let me just fire this up. There we go. So the keys board is this um, is this bottom bottom board that you can see there. That's a USB host shield. So really, all that does is it gives US it gives a USB connection um, that you can run USB devices in into an Arduino. It, you, you've actually you've got a USB connection on the Arduino for programming it, which is the big one, but not necessarily for um, for adding extra devices. So that's purely to give to enable you to plug in USB connections. Um like okay. the like like the, the mic like the Microsoft um Bluetooth receiver. Okay. Does that make sense? So it's just a USB hat. It's it's literally it's just a, a USB extension for the for the for okay. the Maestro. Oh, sorry for the Arduino. <laughs> and if you don't already have your main uh, uh, Mega 2560, you can get an ADK or an ADK clone, and it has that USB uh, port on it built onto the main board. Um, they're a little bit more expensive, and I think the official Arduino ones have been discontinued, but the uh, clones work more or less every time. Do they, um, do they work with the... Um... Pad one sketch, Mark, do you know? Yes. Uh, I know they work with Shadow. Uh, I believe they work with Padawan as well, and I'm, I would imagine the Padawan 360. They do. Uh, that's what I've got in my R2 right now. I've got the uh, Arduino, um, or the, the Mega ADK or SDK for, uh, um, oh, what the heck is a phone? Uh, you yes, I'm using one of mine. There we go. Actually, I'm trying to remember. I know, I know that for the shadow, the megas are required, and it's pretty similar code modifications between shadow and uh, Padalon. But uh, is uh, mega necessary with these uh, Xbox 360s? I thought that there was one that could run off of an Uno. You, you can run them up. Yeah, you can run them off the Uno. It's just, I guess, on the pad one. Um, you've got two serials, two well, two hardware serial devices with the saber tooth and the siren, um, and you know it's. I think you can run them on software the serial. Actually, too. actually, that's a good point. I forget I said that because uh, that might even cause confusion because I think the uh, Uno's. I'm not sure if it's still the case, but back when I first started with the paddle on, there was an error. I don't know if it was, I think it was related to the Uno and it didn't do software serial very nice coinciding with one of the other libraries that we need. So it's servo. So, yeah, so if you, if you run the servo library and you run software serial, they both use the same interrupts. It's a nightmare. So the servos just go all over the place when you're in software serial. So I did, I've got, um, I've got one um, servo on the chopper for the, for the head nod one, which is direct to the um, Arduino, and I run it off the software, um, off the servo library, and as soon as I put software serial, it just went bananas. So I ended <laughs> up just running it off a straight PWM and sending the signals out and mapping them accordingly. But um, yeah, I, I just I try to keep away from serial software serial where I can do because it does 
it does use uh, a lot of the interrupt ports. And when you start sharing interrupt ports, some of the other libraries behave a little bit erratically. Cool. Well, I think that's it, folks, unless you want to get drunk and have a party. Well, that sounds fun. <laughs> yeah, I thought so. <laughs> more intimate version of droids and drinks. I think so, yeah. I think we should do these more often. Electricity and alcohol goes together really well, particularly when you get <laughs> bolts and um, <laughs> well, As stuff. long as it's droids, then drinks, you're, you're usually all right. Yeah, that's not my order, really. <laughs> <laughs> well yeah hopefully that made sense um so i think what what i was going to do next time is just go through a little bit of the fault finding which is you know where where, where we kind of look into when things don't work and how we kind of dig into it and where the best places are to to look um and then i, th I think we're pretty much pretty much there i can share well I sh obviously i'll share things like chopper code and the code that i've got at the moment i think ch the challenge you've got with a lot of this is that as soon as you get on with servos, there isn't a standard sketch that you can just load and it works. Um, you've got to you've got to set it up yourself with your own build. All the servos are at slightly different angles. You can so you're gonna to have to tune it. So understanding the mechanism is is is, is far better than you uh, you having to you know come in trying trying to download a default one and then changing all sorts of parameters to tune it. You're better off building your own really. Yeah, that, that maestro looks. Awesome. I don't have one yet. So I, I originally had a uh, an Adafruit uh, 16 channel servo controller that they had. And I could never figure out the library. I mean, I could figure it out eventually, but having to map out the servo positions and stuff was such a pain in the butt. Uh, but that Maestro looks like a dream. Yeah. When, when, my, when Michael came up or started showing, I was like, Especially the, with the, uh, the the control or the, the the software that you're using to set up the sketch, the the different uh, sequences and stuff, it was like, okay, PCA is out the window, um, <laughs> and I've I've already been playing around. I actually finally got um, after I figured out that the twelve channel and the six channel zero is opposite, op, zero is not at the same same end as the bot as the battery. That was a, that was a fun annoyance. Um, I got. Uh, my um, you know, zero through zero through five are now uh, outputs instead of servos for relays, and uh, so I was able to get uh, the the um, the sax valve routine. I got a servo on on uh, my droid is the head is Robbie the robot, the body is Archer, mm -hmm. and I got his his servo to to run the eyebrows one way, and then the kind of rattle tat 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 tat, tat and then back. And uh, I haven't tried uploading it. I haven't. Uh, I've gotten as far as making a sequence, but not actually putting it onto the the, the uh, maestro. But now I have something to do today. <laughs> that reference to you, so. They're they're my new best friend. I love the maestros. It's, I know it's when fun. when I built I built when I built the first R two uh, version two and uh, all the arms that come out and the grippers and and whatever. It, it really frustrating because all the servos are at different speeds. So you know you kind of ah, throw yourself out, and then you know you and you and then end up trying to slow it down in the code on the Arduino, which is kind of you know moving to little stepper positions. Um, and where where like the little MG nineties are really fast, you can see the step positions. And then of course the controls get sluggish because the Arduino and it's always a nightmare. Um, and I'd. It was one of those, you know, you kind of hear a lot of people playing around with maestros, and I go, oh yeah, they're, they're, I bet they're interesting, but I never actually bought one. And then when I got one, well, I just kicking myself. I just thought, why did I go through all of that, all of that pain, when you just got this lovely little box? The acceleration and deceleration of it is beautiful. You know, if, it, if you're trying to do semi, you know, natural movements, um, and you want it to move to one position, it's just, it's just great, and it takes all the stress out of, out of out of the movements, you know, the, that, the chopper arm where the arm comes out and flexes, you know, it, on a normal one, it dink, 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 and the whole thing rattles, whereas you can you can get it to slow down when it when it moves to position. So uh, the love of the box, I and mean, it's without, out of the box, you, you program the default ones, and then it's actually got its own language, a bit like Arduino, so you can massively <laughs> configure a lot of those, um, a lot of those um, animations, and you can, change the speed midway and do all of the stuff in, in the code so well worth I'm, i just love them to bits now i've got about three or four of them just to play around with 
the fact that I, you can I, define I the starting position so that when it first turns on, it finds a specific place to start yeah. and doesn't just go to center all the time is also a very <laughs> handy feature. <laughs> well, I'm, 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 happy, I'm happy that uh, I wasn't farther along on Robbie when, uh, when, when these came along, so I didn't have to redo much because this is this was perfect timing. Well, I run again. I run the R2 Origin on that on that that 16 channel board that you mentioned, Mark. And um, when when you powered it up, all the servos went dink. Um, they all moved a little bit. So and literally the, the the gripper arm was bashed against the door to trying to get out. But luckily the door was shut. But I just thought it's not. I'm not. It's not a comfortable place to be because it because just the power surge. It just all moves when you first fire it up. Whereas yeah, you've got so much control over the maestro. Yeah, it's nerve wracking to know that your servos are whacking into the internal of those doors and maybe straining and you know, I never know when a gear is gonna knock itself yeah. into pieces. That's right. The other the other thing with the with the maestro, which I, I brilliant, is you can actually power you can power the servos off as part of the animation, which is which is fantastic. So on the on the chopper arms, when the chopper arms are inside inside the body the i've got little magnets so that they keep relatively at home position but they do they do move a little bit so and what i was worried about is effectively until i run animation that the the servos would be under load just holding the arms in place whereas actually they just rest they rest against the door anyway so they're quite safe so what what i've done with chopper is the first animation is pulls it into that default position make sure all the doors the doors are closed and then it just powers everything off so then it just relaxes. So when you run any animation, the first animation is it fires all the servos up and pulls it to its default position, does the animation, pulls it back in, and then it powers everything off again. So you, you know that your servos are not under any load whatsoever, except when you're actually um, actually running animations, which is a lot better. Whereas the the one I've got on R2, you know, they're kind of in the default position, and the if you start to push it, they're, they're under a little bit of load. So there's yeah, it's the nice, the nice boxes. Those nice drawers, they really are. So doing that, you put a frame. Doing a, uh, one of your, one of your frames is just all you're doing is is clicking the enable box. Is that basically what that is? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So so if you if you if you if you set a frame where and you just don't click all the enable boxes, that frame says just power everything down, just relax, chill out, guys, and then yeah. you know. So yeah, it's. Um, and I think, I mean, I've only scratched the surface, really, but, uh, you know, we, we, as a group, no doubt, we'll play with it and come up with some pretty cool stuff going forward. Michael, Todd's having a hard time with his uh, audio, uh, with his mic, so he asks me on text to pass on to you the question. Uh, if you can show how to add the maestro into the actual Padawan 360 sketch. So, how to... Add the maestro in the actual Pad1360 sketch. Yep, let's just uh, fire up. So this is the this is the Pad1360 sketch. Um, I've called it Pad1 Chopper, but it's the same sketch. I can show you through this, but what I'll do, I'll pop this also in the in the shared folder and I'll drop drop it on the group. So if we go through this. Um, all the default settings for the um, for the uh, uh, pad one sketch, and then it's very similar to what we did when we when we first looked at how we loaded the code up. So what I've got here is um, where's the I'm trying to look for the include for the um, maestro should be here. There we go. Yeah. So. First couple of things, I've, the first three three lines to add it in is I've got here, which is include Polu Maestro, which is the main Maestro library, include software serial, and then set the software serial to pins 10 and 11. What I've got on the chopper um, sketch is I've got two instances. So I've got the Maestro that controls the body, and I've got a Maestro head, and I'm running them off two different serial ports. So one's off serial three, which is on the Arduino Mega, and the other one's on Maestro Serial. So I've set up two serial ports here, both linked to Mini Maestro. So really um, standard pad one, I've just added those in. And then it continues through um, up to setup. 
And then when I get to set up, I've got the serial ports that start the um, serial three and the Maestro. So that's a, that's the software serial port and that's serial three, both to nine six hundred. Um, so and that's that's pretty much it. And then and again, then you just jump into loop. And then all I've really done with the loop, it's, it's exactly what we just covered really, but when you when you go into the loop, I've um, then started to alter the code. I think it's near towards the bottom actually. Let me just see if I can pull the code up. So this is where it's literally getting um, button presses, where did I put it, turn throttle. Can't find the damn thing now. Oh, there it is, there you go. I've got Maestro, Restart, Script. There we go, yep, so these are... So, yeah, so to add it into the Padawan 360, this is the Maestro animation section. And what I've done here is it goes R2, which is the um, unfortunately named button at the back of the um, uh, Xbox 360, so it's a right, right trigger button. So when that right trigger button is true and you press the up key, so I'm using key combinations here, it runs script zero. If I'm using R2 and down, it runs script three. R2 and up, it runs script one. And that's literally all I'm all I'm doing really to, to trigger the main script. So to add the maestro to a standard pad one, all you've really got is those those bits, bits at the front, which is loading the main um, loading the main driver or library, which is that holy maestro loading the serial port and setting the serial port up configuring the maestro um and then literally um starting the serial ports up and then it's literally just call it calling the scripts if that answers the question well um let me just say this as what i'll do is i'll pop this in i'm going to pop in um secret projects the new one you got in there right now, uh, labeled the Padawan Shopper. That's it. That's the same one. Okay. That's the same one. Uh, what, what, I've, what I've done is I've just got a little folder that's got that wiring diagram that I've just shown you. Um, it's got the Maestro little test rig that we put together, the code for that. Um, and I've just added that Padawan thing on there. So I'll pop a link to that folder and the... Um, in the page after this, then people can have a little play around with it. Thank you. Cool. Right. I think we're done. If that's one last question about Chopper. Yeah. Do you have, or did I miss it in all the hubbub uh, where you uh, add the motor for the dome and the, uh, um, the head nodding? Do you have those instructions already on there and I just missed them? But uh, uh, in the, um, in the Padawan code, no, I'm sorry for the uh, actual installing or putting it together. No, I haven't got those instructions. No, uh, um, I've done. I've done all the instruction. I've done all the the modules now for the dome, which is the arms, the periscope, and all of that sort of stuff. The very last thing I've got to do is the is the lazy Susan um, yeah. installation um, and the nod, and okay. I'm just cut, I'm just cutting the dome up as, for for smaller printers. I've got a. I've got a mental block when it comes to Lazy Susans. I hate them with passion because they're all, the holes are always different. So whenever it comes to a Lazy Susan, I'll go, oh, my God, here we go. But uh, I've got a plan, actually, with Chopper where it's a relatively small and simple uh, bracket that holds it in. So it, it should be fairly easy to configure that for a million different sizes for Lazy Susans, as there appears to be. That's the piece thing you got with the bar that connects the two, right? The Yes. There's a front and rear, yeah. So I've already got that all printed out. And I figured out, I, I can see how that probably hooks to the Lazy Susan, but I was yeah. like the masters. It, use, it uses the Lazy Susan as the main part of the frame, actually. It's because it's, it, it's metal, it's quite solid, and then you just got the gear ring that sits on top. So um, yeah, it's just it's just when everyone starts ordering Lazy Susans, every Lazy Susan, they're not like bearings where they've got standard holes. They're just all over the place. Um, I think I think we need an industry standard for Lazy Susans, particularly 18 inches or 450 mil. I grabbed the same one I used for the R2, and it seemed to line up pretty good. I will have to drill 
couple of holes to attach to those brackets. That's, that's what I had to do for chopper too, but it's real straightforward. Yeah. And once you once you line you know, once you see how it works, it's real simple. I think I had to drill four holes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah thanks, Chris. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad it's easy. Yeah. Uh, I know. I just. Uh, I just feel like doing a whole video series on attaching lazy susans. That's why I'm doing printed lazy susans. They're so much bloody easier than, than bought ones because I can make sure that they're a standard. But anyway, fabulous. Right. I will leave you all to have a good day, good morning, or good evening, wherever you are. And um, hopefully catch you all soon. I think we're going to drink some droids next Saturday if anybody fancies just drinking and talking rubbish for a bit. So. Have a good session, Michael. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. That was great. Thank you, guys. See you soon. Bye. Bye. Yeah.